Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to another exciting literature class. A very, very exciting literature class that I know you will not want to miss. Today's class will be looking at a lovely play, a lovely and very interesting play titled Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. Lesson Objectives. At the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to understand the background of the dramatist, the background and setting of the play, as well as the plot summary. Background of the dramatist. This is John Osborne. John Osborne, in full, John James Osborne, born 12th December 1929 in London, England, and died on the 24th of December 1994 in Shropshire. He's a British playwright and a film producer whose book, Look Back in Anger, which was performed in 1956, ushered in a new movement in British drama and made him known as the first of the angry young men. Background of the play. Look Back in Anger is the most successful and popular of Osborne's play. It is a realistic play. It is a kitchen sink drama. It is a kitchen sink drama, meaning it is a play that depicts the daily struggles of ordinary working class people. People that people in this um, type of dramatic text often deal with social issues such as poor living conditions, lack of employment, poverty, and strenuous and turbulent and not peaceful relationship so that's why it's called a, a kitchen sink drama the setting is in the small apartment of jimmy and allison the small apartment of jimmy and allison now let's look at the plot summary of the play look back in anger the play is in four parts actually look back in anger is a play by john osborne in which the overeducated and underemployed jimmy porter struggles to control his anger resulting in him lashing out at his wife allison jimmy runs a small candy shop he is dissatisfied with his job and feels that he deserves more out of life at her friend helena's urging allison leaves jimmy and then after allison leaves Jimmy confronts Helena and the two move in together and become a couple. Alison, who has miscarried, returns to the house and Helena, feeling guilty, reconciles with Alison and leaves Jimmy. Alison and Jimmy decide to repair their marriage. Now, we'll be looking at a breakdown of the plot summary. Now, as you can see in the picture on the left-hand side, you see a diagram of the way the plot flows in the story and number one there we are having introduction introduction here we are introduced to jimmy porter a pro a provocator who is described as a as a man who who is full of pride ruthless restless importunate all these combinations make him alienated from the sensitive and the insensitive he picks on his roommate cliff his roommate is cliff he picks on his roommate who is a fable and a peacemaker putting him down because he is not educated we are also seeing in number one that jimmy and alison porter are in an antagonistic relationship where he's always antagonizing everything she does every single thing she does so he is always on her case and then we have the rising action number two where we have cliff lewis the friend and roommate cliff lewis seems better suited for alison porter here we see that james says his most poisonous comment for his wife alison he always badmouths her talks negative to her jimmy taunts her for her upper middle class upbringing and also mocks her family just to get a response from her alison responds with only mild answers and continues her ironing as you can see in the first part of the play when jimmy and Clee engage in Cosplay, Jimmy deliberately pushes Cliff into Alison and she is burned by the iron. 
Like, how will a husband be so cruel as to make sure that his wife feels pain? Cliff and Allison tell Jimmy that he needs to leave. He needs to leave. So, it is now in number three of our rising action that we see that while Jimmy is out of the room, Allison tells Cliff that she is pregnant and that Jimmy is not aware. Now, in number four of the rising action, we see that Cliff urges her to tell Jimmy. He encourages her to tell him. She speaks to Cliff about her marriage and admits that one of the reasons she married him is because her parents opposed the marriage. But now she's afraid of telling him. She doesn't know what he would do to the baby. She is so scared. As you can see in number four, she is so afraid. And then we move to the rising action five where Helena Charles comes to stay in the building. Alison's friend and church and church friend as well, Helena, calls and says she needs a place to stay. Alison offers her place. Jimmy never likes Helena Charles. He never likes her. He angrily lashes out. He started yelling and shouting. At the end of all the terrain, he cruelly tells Alison. He tells her that if only something, something will happen to you and wake you out of your beauty sleep. If you could have a child and it would die or let it grow, let a recognizable human face emerge. If only I could watch you face that. I wonder if you might even become a recognizable human being yourself. But I doubt it. A husband is saying that he wishes that he, she will have a child and it will die so she will feel the reality of the world. And a husband is saying that to his wife. That is where we, what we can see in number six where Jimmy, Jimmy and um, we see that Number five, sorry, where we see Helena Charles coming to stay in the building and because of that, Jimmy lashes out at Alison and tells her that if only she could feel a good death of a child, she would know what reality looks like. Now in Rising Action 6, we see that Jimmy and Helena argue. Part 2, that's where we can see that two weeks later, Jimmy, Alison, Cliff and Helena are now living together. They are now living together. It's a tense situation. And Helena and Jimmy are always at loggerheads with each other, always arguing. So you see that they never connect, but the argument causes romantic sparks. Because in a way, the argument made the two of them notice each other. Now, rising action number seven, we see that Helena convinces Alison to move to her parents' house. He, she convinces Alison that she needs to go back to her parents. She needs to take it, take some time off. Since she's pregnant, she should go back to her family and relax herself. Stay there before Jimmy tries to kill her. So you see, after she 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 decides that okay, she's going to visit a friend's mother who is dying. So that's the excuse she told Jimmy that she's going to visit a friend, a friend's mother who is dying. So when Jimmy returns, he and Helena get into a fight. He gets in um, Helena and Jimmy get into a fight. That's where we see rising action number eight, where Helena finally tells Jimmy that Alison is pregnant. But he doesn't care. He tells her he doesn't care. That he doesn't care about her pregnancy. And because of that, Helena, in a fit of rage, they're yelling at Jimmy. And in the course of yelling, the both of them finally engage in some form of um, um, romantic relationship. They end up having sex and Helena takes Alison's place. That's where we see number nine. Number nine, the climax of the story, the climax of the play. As Jimmy's new girlfriend, Helena now takes Alison's place in the house. It's it's very very shocking then the falling action number 10 Alison returns revealing that she has had a miscarriage we see that she returns to the old apartment she lost her baby and she's looking extremely unhealthy extremely 
unhealthy. So it is when she returns, she and Helena have a long talk where Helena tells her that she's sorry, her conscience has been pricking her, she's really sorry for taking her place in her husband's house, this and that and this and that. So we see in calling action number 11, Helena tells Jimmy she's leaving him. So Helena leaves the apartment for good, while Jimmy is unsympathetic to Alison until she pleads with him and she tells him, don't you see, I am in the mood at last. Don't you see it? That thing you said, I'm in the mood at last. I'm groveling. Don't you see, I'm in the mood at last. I'm groveling. I'm crawling. I'm feeling the pain you said I will never feel. I'm finally feeling it. I'm finally feeling it. Now, you see that the resolution, which is number 12, Jimmy finally seeing that, oh, Alison has finally experienced the terrible experience he wished upon her. And the feeling that she can now understand him better because she understands what it's like to get hurt. He decides to comfort her and then they realize that you need each other for solid and they both reconcile. They both reconcile. So you can see that the story is about a young man, Jimmy, who wants his wife and the world to feel the same hurt he has felt. He wants to punish those who have had the fortune of not experiencing pain. So he always feels that Alison, who was born with a silver spoon in her mouth, has never experienced pain. So she should go through a little bit of pain to understand where he is coming from. That's the story of Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. By John Osborne. This is the entire story. So we're going to be doing a little bit of home fun. Do you think Helena was right in moving with Jimmy? What do you think? Do you think she was right in moving with Jimmy? Despite the fact that Jimmy was her friend's husband. Tell me in the comment section. So, we've come to the end of our lovely class where we've done an introduction on the play Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. Our next class will be on the themes of John Osborne's Look Back in Anger. Until then, I'll see you in our next class. Bye.